We are headed out onto the Cape with the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy today. This is a beautiful boat. Check this boat out. So I've got Captain Josh with me today. Do we have a name for the boat? This is uh, the Research Special Dark Star. Dark Star, that's a cool name. Yeah, well, it was donated to us and we, we like to keep the, the name true to the donor and uh, you know, we're really grateful for it, so we kept the name of the boat. This is the iconic boat that uh, if you live on the Cape and you see the this dark hole with the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's logo on it, you know what's going on, right? There's, yep. there's a shark yep. nearby. The well, today we're going to go out and we're going to drone sharks. Uh, the Conservancy is working on a drone study, a shark. I'll let you tell us. What, 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 is, what are we doing today? Well, um, our drone crew is just getting on the boat here. I'm, I'm, I'm the captain of the boat. My job is to, to, to kind of assist the research team, get them as close to the sharks as we can. Uh, but we want to we want to find out like how the how the sharks are reacting to boats. Do they know the boat that the boats are coming? Do they get out of the way? Do they you know we have a lot of sharks getting hit by boats. We are seeing a lot of injuries. So what can we do to to learn more about that? And that's kind of the goal of the of the current study we're doing boat approaches. That's interesting. A lot of my footage, as you guys have seen, we have a lot of boat strike and prop injuries, things like that. It's going to be interesting to see, and I've seen it before from above, you get that perspective, but when you, when you get a shark next to a boat, don't, they don't always move out of the way, and that, mm. that's evident. Sometimes they'll slide out of the way, but a lot of the injuries I see are prop strikes. So it, it's pretty cool that you guys are doing this. So let's get going. Let's Sounds rock good. and roll. All right. As we started our journey, I took in the fresh air and the view from the pulpit of the research vessel. This is by far the best view in the house when a shark is nearby. Today, the weather is incredible, and I couldn't wait to see a white shark up close. All right, so the search has begun. Our current situation is we have a spotter plane up above. Wayne is up flying, and what he does, he, he goes north and south here on the Cape, spots a shark, tells Josh, and then Josh uh, takes, takes us to the shark. Uh, he just finished his first pass here. Water visibility is not too great today. Uh, he hasn't spotted a shark yet. Maybe we'll put up the drone. Maybe we'll find one with a drone, huh? <laughs> it didn't take long to find life. It seems the stripers are everywhere this time of year. But sure enough, a small white shark was roaming the bottom nearby. What we are looking for is a shark on the surface, and this one doesn't seem to be cooperating. Regardless, we stayed on it for a few minutes. Eventually, the shark did pop up. It seemed interested in something on the surface, but it soon retreated to the depths below. Shortly thereafter, it came up again. While fascinating, the shark was too inconsistent for the team to conduct a proper boat approach test. But the day was early, and Wayne spotted two more sharks further north. Okay, it's 11 o'clock now, and uh, about seven boat. All right. Well, the spotter plane, Wayne, has spotted two sharks here, so we're going to put the drones up, and they're going to start collecting data. With the drone up in the air, my purpose is to offer spotting support where needed and to basically stay out of the way. As they conducted their field data collection, I flew to a different location to film the second shark Wayne had spotted. I'm going to go to the other shark if that's cool. Yeah, I don't know where it is. But... Okay. I headed about a mile south. A seal colony there seemed like a good place to find another shark. There is where I found the cleanest shot of a shark yet. It was roaming the area near the seals, and it was going into very shallow waters. Meanwhile, the team was focused on a shark of their own that was also near seals. A mile south, I continued to monitor this shark. Filming sharks in the shallows has to be my favorite scene to document, especially when the water is this clear somewhat of a rarity here in Cape Cod. Nine sharks in our general vicinity here, so I think we're all going to be able to have a, our own shark to observe. 
Alright, tell me what you're doing. I am getting ready to fly the drone and find a shark for another boat approach. So we'll locate the shark with the drone and we'll do about five to ten minutes of uh, controls, just following the shark, seeing what the shark is doing, and then we'll line up our spotter plane with the boat and uh, we have randomized trials where we are approaching sharks from different speeds and different angles and we'll set up for an approach. We'll do the approach and then we follow the shark and see what the shark's reaction is and how it changes course, if it does so, uh, for the remainder of the drone battery. So far today, we've had no problem finding sharks. Thanks to the air support from Wayne, the team stays busy. Things were about to get really exciting for me. I was about to film the most unique shark I'd ever seen. With a spotter plane guiding us, a large white shark approached near shore. This shark was being trailed by scores of fish. This is a symbiotic relationship that I've seen before. But when I look closer, this shark was different. So the shark we just found, uh, they're preparing to do uh, their data collection on it, but it appears it has scoliosis, is that what you said? Yeah, I, I didn't even know sharks could get scoliosis, but apparently they can. I'm gonna try to get some underwater footage of it. Maybe we can make that happen. It's right in front of us right now. I'll show you. We're gonna do a slow approach on this. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you're all set. Still looking for him here. Up, oh, right here, 12 o'clock. Right here. Look at this. This is a nice size shark. It's older. Ooh, that's a big one. Wow. He's down deep. There's right here. He's right here. I see him. But he's really deep. Right in front of us. From the drone, the bulge indicating scoliosis is not nearly as pronounced. But looking down right next to this large shark, I could easily see the condition. I tried to capture it with a pole cam, but the visibility just wasn't there. So we tried again. This time, you can clearly see the extent of the scoliosis. The bulge is visible. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before on a white shark. We're prone to attack. We're not. I don't know. I mean, he's still driving. Yeah, look how he's coming. Cod. I mean, this is his 10th year here. So Victoria's gonna turn on the hydrophone, drop the receiver in, right? Yep. Yep, so this is the receiver here, and what I'm dropping in is the hydrophone. So any shark that is tagged will ping on this receiver here, and it'll make a beeping noise, right? Yeah, like yeah. a little, like, ping, ping, ping. And then it'll de this receiver will decode that ping mm -hmm. um, after a series of pings, and then we'll get a number. The number that pops up here is going to identify the shark. But pretty close to shark right now and there's no, no pinging so maybe it's a shark that is not tagged. Yeah, potentially. It was time to turn back south. I decided to fly the drone ahead of the boat as we traveled to see what I could find. It was no surprise I found more sharks and of course it was no surprise to find them near seals. I did find more stripers seemingly annoying another shark. But it was this shark that was the most surprising. Notice how small it is. This is likely a young of the year white shark, and it's the smallest I've seen on Cape Cod. Today was one of those days that made me grateful for this opportunity. Seeing so much sea life around gives me hope that what we are doing here is helping to preserve this place. And it reinforced the concept that one of the best ways to protect an ecosystem is to learn about it. Cape Cod is undoubtedly beautiful, 
but it is also home to sharks that must be understood and respected in a manner that is quite different from nearly all marine species. I look forward to coming back to this place, and maybe, just maybe, I'll see this shark once again. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy for hosting me aboard their research vessel. I highly encourage visiting the Shark Center in Cape Cod if you are ever in the area. If you like content like this, please let me know by liking, sharing, and subscribing.